the great clutch debacle of 2022. Where do I begin, guys? Friday, I went to my buddy's shop to do a clutch job on my 1960 Apache 10 with the 235. This is a simple procedure. We did it nine years ago in my backyard on pavers with limited tools. My buddy has a lift at his shop. So we, I got there on Friday. We shuffled the shop a little bit, cleaned up, got the truck on the lift, had everything disassembled probably, disassembled probably in 20 minutes, 25 minutes maybe. And we realized that my flywheel is in bad condition. Stress cracks, it, it could be resurfaced, could be replaced, you know, but I don't have time for that while my truck's on the rack in my buddy's shop. I can't beach my you know, vehicle there. And obviously I drive this thing to and from work, so that's not an option. So my buddy, being a good dude, says, hey, you know what, leave it here overnight, get a flywheel in the morning, and, uh, you know, it sound, sounded good. It's like, all right, you know, let's do it. So I go to the specialty store. I had to get a ride for my other buddy. So I'm asking every guy, go to the specialty store. The same specialty store that I bought everything for this truck from, pretty much, for this truck from for pretty much 10 years, and they sold me this. I told them I needed a 168 tooth flywheel for a Chevy 235. Anybody who knows the bolt pattern on a 235 crankshaft knows that this is wrong. This is a 168 tooth flywheel for a, sorry about the noise guys. Big diesel won't you whine, right on. This is a 168 tooth flywheel for a Chevy 265. And I get it, the guy's trying to help me out. He heard 168 teeth. He saw something that was pre-63 and he grabbed it. You know, and I should inspect my parts better. You know, I, I, if I was a little less out of it, I probably would have popped it open, realized that the, that the dowel holes weren't there, and moved on. When I get back to the shop, I realize this, of course. So I do a rough deglazing on my old flywheel and put it back on with some new hardware. And we pop in this new clutch set, get everything together, reassembled, and we test it and we realize that I don't have a clutch. And we tested it a few different ways. We did some adjustments. I even made a different rod for the slave cylinder to give it more play. I thought that's maybe what it was. But it ended up that this is the wrong clutch kit as well, which is worrisome because nine years ago, when I was 21 years old, and knew, I still know nothing, but I knew absolutely nothing about vehicles. I was able to go into that store with the same information and leave with a proper clutch kit. And it has kept me rolling for nine years, and it still did, because we had to reassemble this truck with all the parts that I drove into the shop in on. Drove into the shop on, geez, I can't even speak right. And I get it, you know what I mean? I, I should be able to, I should measure, I should, I'm gonna have to bring calipers and stuff now, I guess, you know what I mean? I gotta check all my parts. I get it, but it's disappointing when you got half a paycheck worth, worth of useless crap. And I could, I mean, I could have just Netflixed and chilled all weekend, you know what I mean? I did, wasted my time laboring over all this stuff with the wrong parts and uh, burden my friends, I feel like, you know what I mean? I, they're obviously good friends, they don't mind, but I mind. And it's a little bit disappointing. But, you know, that's not really what matters, I guess. The truck rolls on, a little bit of bearing noise, but we'll get to it. We will get a flywheel, we will get a clutch kit, and the truck will roll on, guys.